Proverbs 16 verse 3 says that commit all your works to God and he will prosper them. Mm-hmm. So I remember praying before studying and asking the Holy Spirit to teach me. Yeah. Praying after studying, asking him to retain mm-hmm. it for me. Praying before writing, asking him to help me remember everything I studied. Yeah. And then praying after writing, thanking him for helping oh, me remember. Wow, that is mm-hmm. so, so inspirational. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Becoming Dr. Andy. I would like to welcome you to a new segment of this channel, which is a podcast. So every Friday I'll be sitting here with a health sciences student or a health sciences professional where we'll be having informative conversations about the health sciences career. And today you are watching the first episode of the podcast And I am with a first year medical student here at UCT, all the way from Libopo. Her name is Bukona, and she's gonna be telling us about how she really qualified to study medicine at UCT, because we all know that 2024, It was so tough to end your spot at UCT Medical School, and she did it. She's also going to share with us how she managed to get the distinctions and the results that she got in metric. So stay tuned and make sure that you watch till the end of the video. Bukwana, welcome to Becoming Dr. Andy. Thank you so much for agreeing to have a conversation with me today. I mean... How does it feel to moving from watching my videos to actually being on this channel? Thank you so much for having me. I feel so honored to be here. It feels like a dream, Mm -hmm. but I have to pinch myself to believe that it's not a dream and I'm actually here. (laughs) Yes, I feel like you really, really end the sport, especially the one at UCT where you are a first year medical student. Just briefly, how has it been? Well, medical school is a lot, Mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say it's hard. It's just that it's hard to adjust to the workload because compared to high school, it's not Mm -hmm. the same. It's a lot, but it's not that hard. If you adjust well and cope well, you can make it. Yeah, no, I totally understand. Hey, I remember when I was like in first year when I thought medicine is just like and advanced life sciences but it was all different so can you tell us whether you've always wanted to be a doctor or medicine is just something you found yourself doing at the end a crazy fact is i've always wanted to be a doctor Mm -hmm. i remember in grade r where we had to do a poem about myself and there's a part where you had to say what you want to be when you grow up yeah and for me from grade R, I've always said I want to be a doctor. Really? Up until now? Yes. That is so, so amazing because I know like, you, you know, when you are in preschool, this day you want to be a doctor, the next day you want to be a police, the other day yeah. you want to be a soldier. It's mm-hmm. literally so hard to actually be consistent throughout yeah. your primary school and your secondary school and actually finally being a medical student. Wow. I, I am so impressed. Well done. Really. So um, I just want to know if is there anything along the way that actually, you know, grew that passion? Because, I mean, I can imagine from grade R, you don't really know much about being a doctor. So I want to know, like, as you go through your primary school, your high school, is there anything that actually grew that passion or something that really inspired you to be like, yes, actually, I really do want to be a doctor? Yeah. Like you, I share the sentiments with you because I remember on your YouTube video you mentioned mm-hmm. that you started learning about the different systems of the body in grade nine. Yeah, a real subscriber, guys. <laughs> a real subscriber. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I also share the same sentiments. I remember getting to grade nine, learning about the different organ systems, mm-hmm. and I was just so interested. You know? I was like, this is so interesting. Yeah. I really want to <laughs> do this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Actually, their question that please guys stop asking me this question what i want to specialize in because you know i came here in medical school knowing that 
Definitely, I want to be a cardiologist. But if you ask me now, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just going to try to get through this degree. Yeah. But I really have to ask you um, this question. Is there any specialty that you are actually attracted to or you just want to be a general practitioner? You know, in grade nine, the musculoskeletal system, mm -hmm. yeah, it caught yeah. my attention. And it, from that point, I've been saying I want to be an orthopedic surgeon. Mm. I still do want to be an orthopedic surgeon, yeah. but that might change like you. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. I think also for us, like in medical school here at UCT, there's no block for cardiology but yeah. orthopedic surgeon you'll find it in fifth year so now you will have to go through all these four years mm -hmm. to actually go to that specialty and see yeah. how it is and then get to decide whether you like it or not but i mean that you can change you know you yeah. are not really like forced <laughs> to stick yeah. with what you like mm -hmm. um there are a lot of specialties that you're still going to be exposed to and Hopefully, eventually, you'll find the, ex you know, the perfect one yeah. for you. So, um, I just want to know, like, in a nutshell, have you always been, like, a best performer your whole, like, academic life, like, from primary school to high school? Well, there were ups and downs, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I remember in grade one, I did receive, like, an award for maths mm. but then from there then on i never received anything yeah. so i guess i was playing i don't know yeah. and then in grade seven i bounced back i got some awards as well mm -hmm. and then grade eight grade nine nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really thought ups and downs okay, I but i remember in high school like grade 10 11 and 12 that's when i became so serious about okay. my academic and then i just maintained my mm -hmm. yeah so so basically you'd say that you are like a hard worker because we know we have like people who are just smart you know yeah. and then we have people who literally put in the work yeah. to get there so you, yeah. you can say that you are like a hard worker yeah i do work hard okay that's really great so um uh which subjects did you take in grade 10 oh so in grade 10 i chose the physical sciences and accounting stream mm -hmm. where we have the major subjects mathematics physical sciences accounting and what else am i missing life sciences yeah life sciences <laughs> okay. and then the compulsory subjects were my home language yeah. Shitsonga, mm -hmm. english and life orientation okay so you did seven subjects yes. okay and out of all those subjects which one was your favorite it has to like be life, life sciences, sciences <laughs> there. Yeah. Um, I don't wanna lie. <laughs> Mine was maths. <laughs> Mine was maths because life sciences just had a lot of yeah. theory, but somehow my best marks were like life sciences. Yeah. You know. Um. So tell us more about you in grade 10 11 and 12 in a nutshell like because you started working hard around then yeah. did your marks start improving like from grade 10 and then they were better in grade 11 and then they were brilliant in grade 12 how was it well grade 10 was coronavirus so i can't really say much oh, about yes. that but i would say because i left my former school i was going into a new school it was hard adjusting to the new teachers and mm, stuff okay. so they were not as great as they should have been and also coronavirus but then we passed is that in grade 10 yeah when you grade moved 10 to new school? Okay. yeah and then in grade 11 i was still in the same school but then somehow coronavirus was still affecting us mm -hmm. we would go to a school for a week and then the next and week then would you know, not go, go at all remember. yeah so my marks my, my marks were good but not as I would expect yeah. them to be great. Yeah. Okay, no, I see. Mm -hmm. And how about in grade 11, do they like improve anyhow? Yeah, they did improve from what I saw in grade mm -hmm. 10, but they were not what, <laughs> I wanted. what you yeah. wanted. Okay, mm -hmm. like giving us a rough estimate, what was like your grade 11 average, if you can Yo, remember? I wanted 90 something averages, Ooh, but the whole girl. year I got 80. 80s 80s averages and i was just not having it Ooh, <laughs> goals can you get guys 80s is not for her okay mm -hmm. wow that is literally great and i mean grade 11 is so important as grade 12 when it comes you know being admitted yeah. at universities and i mean it looks like you have been working hard since grade 10 of which i think it is the reason why 
you it puts you at the spot you are in today because some people think i just have to get brilliant marks in metric yeah. and then i am sorted but they don't really know that grade 11 is is important yeah. so let's get to the big year which is metric Mm. Right, which high school did you go to actually? I went to EPP Minga High School, which is in Kamalamlele in Limpopo. People who are from that high school, <laughs> please send hats yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> fires on that comment because you are well represented I'm here. Okay. <laughs> how was metric in a nutshell? Was it like hard? You know, yeah. how what, what was it like your experience in summary overall? I found metric very hard because. We were affected by coronavirus mm. in grade 10 and 11 mm. and some concepts in grade 12 you you needed to have a foundation from yes, grade 10 and yes. 11 and some things were removed out of the syllabus so you'd Yo. get to grade 12 and have to learn this thing from scratch oh, and yeah. that was very Yo. hard yeah but then you made it I hey made it. <laughs> which means you were literally working 10 mm. times harder yeah. okay so um when it comes to Great tough, right? So you're doing your term one and now applications open. So I want to know like, okay, was medicine your first option? I mean, I would assume it was. And what was your second option and your third option? Um, I remember I would always make medicine my first option, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then it was so hard to choose a second option, but I knew that it had to be something in health sciences. Okay. So I chose physiotherapy to be my second right. option. And it was just so hard to think of a third option, so I didn't have one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually experienced the same <laughs> thing. I was like, either medicine or nothing <laughs> at this point. But anyway, I just want to know how many universities did you apply to and how was the response from them? I'm not going to lie. At first, I applied to only three universities because mm -hmm. when I googled best universities for medicine, um, UCT, Stills and vets would come out. I was like, okay, I'm going Girl, to the top universities. The way I'm laughing <laughs> is because I am not a better person at this. I only applied at three. Yeah. <laughs> I did the same. I was like, top universities in Africa. They were like, UCT is still in yeah, exactly. I applied to that and mm -hmm. I moved on with my life. I, so, and that is a bad habit. Yeah, that is, is a bad it. habit. Especially now because you guys are getting 100% and stuff. Yeah. Back in my <laughs> days, 100% was, yeah, magic. Okay, so the competition was not as tough. Right, but right now with your 90s, if you do this thing of applying to only three universities, you are literally putting your life in <laughs> danger. <laughs> don't do it. A teacher of mine came to warn us and said, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. And then I ended up applying at every university in South Africa that offers medicine. Oh, so like 10 of them. Yes. And um, so I think I said this on one of my platforms. I think it was TikTok telling people to apply to as many universities as, as they can and they kind of like complained or talked about um, application fees so how did you find that well my parents work so mm -hmm. i asked them to give me the money and i paid but then some universities are great because if you're in a public school they don't make you pay application fees. Oh, really? Yeah. And is there any process that you have to follow for that to happen? Not really. I think the moment you enter your school your details, school. they okay. know that it's a public school. So. And which universities are those, if you can remember? I remember Stellenbosch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some application fees were free. I didn't pay some. I remember I didn't pay some. The only really? place I paid was UCT and Bits. So the rest I didn't pay. And I remember UKZN wanted me to pay, but did I pay? I didn't pay. So my application just that. Yeah, me. it didn't go through. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. No, I hear you. So um, I did get positive feedback from all of them, which mm -hmm. was a good thing. And it was, yeah, it was yeah. boosting my confidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So basically all of them did accept you. Yes. And... Do they give you like provisional acceptance and then accepted you formally in January or what really happened? I remember UCT, Vets and Stellenbosch gave me conditional offers. Mm -hmm. But maybe because I was not very interested in the other universities, I was not mm. keeping their credit. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. That's really great. And was UCT your first choice? Yeah, it was. It was my first choice. <laughs> is, was it simply because it's the best university in Africa or is there anything else? Ah, oh, yeah. I know. Hey? Yeah, that's easy. 
It's the habit of Africa. <laughs> it makes the two of us. And a lot of people would literally argue. You know, I would see that they say this is the Harvard of Africa. I'm just like, what do you mean? Girl, go you use your Google. <laughs> exactly. Use your Google, okay? <laughs> Let's talk about your NBT. Around when did you write your NBT? I wrote my NBTs around April. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was no, it like- was it April? No, was it? Ju- I think it's July because I remember writing them after my June exam. After your June exam. Yeah, okay, it was perfect. in July. And how did you like prepare for the... Um, I used your YouTube video. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I used your YouTube videos. I, th- there's this app, I forgot the name of the app. That was I, it the one that I recommended on yeah, my yeah. YouTube? And oh I, my. I, I used guys, 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 watch, watch video. my videos. <laughs> watch <laughs> watch videos. my videos. And did it really help you? It did. Actually, I flowed through that mess. I was like, is this me? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> really? And uh, mm-hmm. what marks did you get? I got proficient marks. I got 71 for QL. Mm-hmm. For AQL, I got 72. And for maths, I got 75. Oh, that's great. That's mm-hmm. really, really great. You know, like, it's always important to balance your NBT with your metric results because yes. you don't want to be getting 80s in your metric results and then 50s in NBT. Mm-hmm. It just won't work. That's why you find most people being rejected simply because their NBT marks are poor. I don't know, like, you know, right now, it is so much better to pass NBTs because you have the resources. For example, the app that you talked about, there are also textbooks that I recommended on that video, and there are also past papers. During my time, which is like more than five years ago, we didn't have that. It was so scarce to find Mm -hmm. resources, and I remember using only my Max textbook, and I think I got 88% for math. I don't know how that <laughs> happened <laughs> but i think i guess maths was literally my favorite yeah. subject and it was mm-hmm. literally my best subject in, yeah. a, in high school so yeah so now let's talk about how you actually survived metric and i mean you didn't literally just survive you aced it okay <laughs> yeah. so um just take us through how was like term one in a nutshell what study techniques did you implement was it anything different from grade 11 it was different from grade 11 because in grade 12 i remember um i studied extra lessons Mm. um i would get out from school at 5 p.m yeah and walk to my extra lessons which would last like until like 7 p.m yeah (laughs) yeah so extra lessons really did help Mm -hmm. and i composed my own notes using the answer series textbooks Mm -hmm. in grade 11 and 10 i didn't do that yeah i did that in grade 12 because i found that it really helps you retain the information if you write it down Mm -hmm. yeah so that is really really an important thing and i like to refer back to my videos and the advices that i give to you guys i remember saying that in order for you to increase your chances of getting great marks in high school you have to walk an extra mile, especially in grade 12. You can't say, okay, I am a great performer. I've been in the top 10 since grade 8. And then I can just continue doing things the way I used to. In grade 12, you have to take those extra classes. You have to find those tutors because you are trying to, you know, ace it like she did. So you can't just, you know... You, you need to actually like access all the help that is available. So you were saying that you ended school basically around 7 p.m. Yeah. And how was that? Because a lot of people will be concerned about balancing life, like social life and academics. And I always say it is literally not possible, but I want to hear from you whether was it possible for you? How did you actually do it? Coming out at school at 7 p.m., mm-hmm. all that's left for me to do is go back home, eat, and like maybe finish up my homeworks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I would be so tired. So basically, I had no social life. Yeah. There's no it's social so- life. <laughs> that's what I say. Like... In metric, you literally have to grind and grind. Mm-hmm. Unless you want just average marks, then yeah. you can everything bal- have everything balanced. But if you really want those great results, 
balancing life is really really not an easy thing so um what then do you do to like relax detox get some rest um outside your books well i had very great friends in mm-hmm. metric they're the kind of people who would make me forget about the stressful yeah. things they would make me laugh mm-hmm. like they were very helpful so have good friends guys have yeah. a good people mm-hmm. surrounding you yeah so um did you get to spend time with them only during the school hours or you would make time outside school hours as well um if there was free time we try to like maybe go out a little mm-hmm. i think the most important thing is actually having like good time management skills mm-hmm. right so knowing the time the good time to actually rest and knowing the good time to actually study because you can't be going out a week before your exams it just doesn't make sense i just want to know how were your results from term one like throughout all the terms like do you remember your average in term one i think it was like an 80 or 85 mm-hmm. and then in term two it increased by like one percent mm-hmm. 86 yeah. And then in term three, it was like 87. Oh. And you know, I don't like 80s. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So in term four, it's like, mm-hmm. it's time to work. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I remember after our trial exams, we had like, we were done with the syllabus. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. was left is to revise everything we had done. Yes. So we had the whole month of October to do that. Mm-hmm. So I was grinding mm-hmm. all of October. I used um, the robot light method you mentioned in one of your YouTube videos. Yeah. So for each subject, I would color in like topics that I understand very well, green, and then those that I am sure but not sure, orange, and where I had no clue, yeah. I would go with red. And I then... actually feel so proud. <laughs> I feel so proud that every time you literally refer to our videos, I'm just like, because every time I record, I'm just like, am I even making sense to these people? Does this thing even work? You know, and for you to tell me that actually I use your method to do this, I am literally so, so humbled by that. So um, I just want to know also, like, what was your key thing that she, you know like literally saved you or literally improved your marks that much like what exactly was it that if you were to advise someone right now and be like do this thing composing your own notes guys Mm -hmm. like composing your own notes gives you your own understanding and by composing i don't mean copying out the textbook yeah make sure that whatever you wrote down there is something you understand Mm -hmm. so in a way you're I don't know. You're retaining the information. You un- you understand what you write. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, good note taking yeah. skills. Okay. So did you like use past papers in any half? I did. You did. I did. I used every trial paper there was mm-hmm. to prepare for my finals. I also used every final year paper there was from like 2011 to yeah. 2021 to prepare for my finals. You know. One thing about past papers, they train you on how to approach different styles of questions, right? And there is no kind of way that they're going to sort of like invent a a new new way to ask equations, Mm -hmm. a new way to ask functions, a new way to ask trigonometry. So if you're going to do every past paper for at least for the past 10 years mm-hmm. best believe me you're gonna find the exact question with different numbers exactly so that's the thing that helped me because when i got to that exam when i opened that paper i already knew the steps that i had to use to actually yes. calculate because i had the experience i know that in grade 12 like studying is a lot already and on the side, you have like a lot of homeworks as well to keep up with. So please tell us how we were you able to like balance between studying and actually completing your homeworks. So like I said, I would come back at school at 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. So I would re- like come back, eat, breathe, mm-hmm. and then I would do my homeworks. But then my school also offered like, we'd have to go to school early in the morning. From half past six to half past seven, oh, we yeah. have Oh, yeah, early classes, yeah. okay. And then from school, school hours actually end at 2 p.m., yeah. but we'd have to stay there until five for studying. So sometimes I'd use that time to do oh, my homework because okay. I'd find it hard to study in class. Yeah. 
Okay, okay was it like self home. study from two to five? Yes. <laughs> On average, how many hours were you putting in per day? You can say when it comes to studying outside, like your extra classes and stuff, like you at home actually sitting down and studying. At max, I'd say five hours. Five hours. Mm-hmm. Ooh, then now it makes me question when were you sleeping? Exactly. Girl, how many hours slept. did you sleep? I don't remember sleeping in matric. <laughs> <laughs> I slept after my final exams, okay? I didn't sleep. Girl, I relate. <laughs> yeah. But the most important thing is actually like finding a routine that kind of works for you so for you do you find it easy studying during the night or early hours of the morning and like which which you know study times do you think are the best for me i wouldn't find my family very disturbing because i had a twin sister and would study together oh wow that's nice where is she now stellenbosch stellenbosch why is she Mm. studying industrial engineering that's nice okay (laughs) When you're saying like your family is not really a problem, were they like supportive, giving you the yeah, space they were to study? Really supportive. I remember if okay, we had like a sort of like study room, mm-hmm. and if my mom would come in and find that I'm sleeping on the table, she'd be like, "Please wake up, wake up and study." And uh-huh. she'd be very supportive. She would not sleep until we sleep. Oh wow! Yeah. So she'd literally be pulling the yeah. cross nighting as yeah. well. That is so sweet, hey? Mm-hmm. Because I mean, having a supportive family is really, really yeah. important. Because if you're in matric, you can't be doing the dishes. Exactly. You can't be cooking. You, can't. Yes. you need to focus mm-hmm. on your books. And I think it is such a blessing to have, you know, supportive mm-hmm. family and family that is understanding because not everyone actually has that luxury yeah. to have a family that says, we'll do the dishes for you, we'll cook for mm-hmm. you, we'll wash your uniform, just study, you know? Yeah. As you've said that your mother has been so supportive and your twin sister was along your side, is there anything else that kept you motivated like every day to actually wake up and study? The fact that young Bukona has always wanted to be a doctor, mm-hmm. I was doing it for her. I, really? Like that was what pushed me every night. That girl, you want to be a doctor. <laughs> yeah, this is your yeah, dream. Wake yes. up and study. Yeah. Wow, that's actually so, so inspiring. Mm-hmm. Because you know when someone asks you, where do you get the motivation to study? I'm just like, girl, have dreams. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just think about it. Mm-hmm. Think about yourself in five years. Yeah. And open that book. Yes. and study because there's literally no other way i can mm-hmm. put it you know the motivation has to come from within you even though we have like we need support structures around yeah. us but they can only do as much yeah. you know you, you you can't just rely on people your teachers your family to be literally pushing you to study all the time sometimes it just has to be you to actually yes. wake up and open that book and actually study also i didn't really ask were you like position one in your high school throughout (laughs) period (laughs) throughout i really really (laughs) love that so which subject would you say was like the best for you in terms like your of your marks surprisingly i would do well in physical sciences Mm -hmm. i love life sciences but physical sciences love me it would like always be the one that's yeah high. yeah mm-hmm. and what percentage did you get for your final in physical sciences 97 it's because chemistry did not behave <laughs> it's always chemistry it's, it's always it's always those s's and bases right i still remember them at my big age I remember. because how am i supposed to find the ph <laughs> exactly. wow 97 that mm-hmm. is really really brilliant was that your highest no, my yeah. highest was surprisingly accounting, which has nothing to do with medicine. <laughs> wow. Mm. Please don't tell me it's 100%. It is. It is 100%. Guys, if you need accounting study <laughs> tips, this is your girl. <laughs> you better contact her. Like, how did you do it? Well, accounting is that kind of subject that needs you to put it into practice mm. and you can't just scram. You need to understand why we're doing a certain transaction like mm, this, yeah. why we're doing that. You need to actually understand it and picture it in your head. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's actually so, so amazing. Your average, I think you didn't tell us your average in metric final. What was it? A 92. At least a 92. <laughs> There's no at least. That is brilliant. A 92% yeah. average. I mean... That is so great. Well done. Well, well done. I'd say 
God help me. Yeah. Honestly. Proverbs 16 verse 3 says that commit all your works to God and he will prosper them. Mm-hmm. So I remember praying before studying and asking the Holy Spirit to teach me. Yeah. Praying after studying, asking him to retain mm-hmm. it for me. Praying before writing, asking him to help me remember everything I studied. Yeah. And then praying after writing, thanking him for helping oh, me remember. Wow, that is mm-hmm. so, so inspirational, hey? So I would like you to give um, people who are still in high school advice, especially those who would like to study medicine or get the great marks that you got as well. So like what piece of advice would you literally give them? Be dedicated. Like she said, let your dream be what pushes you to Mm -hmm. study, to push. Yeah, make sure you have your goals and your dreams in your mind so that it pushes you to just go through all those difficult times. And good note taking and past papers Mm -hmm. as well. NBTs are important. (laughs) Yeah. NBTs, prepare for your NBTs. And just watch Dr. Andy's videos i did that (laughs) period she said everything Mm -hmm. she's the reason i'm here (laughs) wow (laughs) thank you girl thank you so so much so we've come to the end of our first episode please like and comment if you have any questions for me or for wukona and please don't forget to subscribe and share this video to everyone who would like to hear the conversation If you would like to join me and have a conversation with me, you can send me an email on becomingdrandy at gmail.com as long as you are a health sciences student or you are a health sciences professional. It doesn't matter whether it is medicine or any other profession. I'll see you guys on my next episode. Bye.